the unstoppable strike, hypersonic missiles, how tactical missiles won the final battle and overcame military defenses. As tensions escalate unprecedentedly between Iran and Israel. اینجا شاین یک است. ما شش دقیقه با مختصات مشخص شده فاصله داریم. آماده پرتاب شید بدون خطا. زمان به نفع ما نیست. At a critical moment, Iran launches the Fateh 1 missile. But was the missile a conventional ballistic missile or a hypersonic missile? First, we will explain how a conventional ballistic missile works, how it is detected and destroyed before reaching its target. We can divide a ballistic missile into parts during its journey toward its target. In most medium or long-range missiles, the missile is divided into three stages. The first stage of a rocket, typically 8 to 12 meters long, is responsible for the launch phase from the Earth's surface to the atmosphere. It is separated after the fuel runs out. Then comes the second stage of the rocket, which is responsible for the intermediate flight phase. Its length ranges from 4 to 6 meters, and its mission is to raise the warhead to a higher altitude and speed. Here, the missile exits the atmosphere and floats in space. Then comes the third stage of the missile, which is the warhead, and it is specific to the phase of the missile's return to Earth, this time toward its target. For any ballistic missile, it travels a huge arc from its launch point, then through the atmosphere into the upper layers of the atmosphere and into space then returns to Earth to hit its target. Therefore, it is relatively easy to detect, where the enemy's radars can study its path because it is fixed from the moment of launch and its path does not change. But how will Israel intercept the missile? Here it is time to explain how the THAAD air defense system works. It is an American missile defense system and one of the systems used by Israel. It was specifically designed to intercept ballistic missiles during the atmospheric entry phase before they strike their target. The THAAD system operates in the upper atmosphere. It does not carry an explosive warhead, but rather intercepts the missile through direct collision. The THAAD system's method for intercepting a ballistic missile. First, there is the early detection phase. Using American satellites such as SBIRS, it monitors the heat of the launch. The ballistic missile's signal is immediately transmitted to command centers and THAAD platforms. The missile is then tracked by radar, which detects the missile while it is still in the air. The radar's task here is to determine the missile's speed, trajectory, and potential impact point. When the impact point is determined, the potential collision gives the order to the platform to launch an interceptor missile, where an interceptor missile is launched at a speed exceeding Mach 8 and heads towards the ballistic missile with high accuracy using a thermal seeker and GPS, then collides directly with the body of the conventional ballistic missile at a tremendous speed, as kinetic energy alone, enough to detonate and destroy it in mid-air. A realistic estimate of the THAAD system's success rate against conventional ballistic missiles is 85%. The success rate of the THAAD system is considered relatively high, so ballistic missile launchers have resorted to developing hypersonic missiles to overcome air defense systems such as THAAD. Some people think that hypersonic missiles are simply very fast missiles, but this is inaccurate. A hypersonic missile has the ability to outpace interceptor missiles due to, first, its high speed, reaching Mach 12. Secondly, its maneuverability and unpredictable trajectories. The missile has the ability to constantly change direction to low trajectories while maintaining its high speed. It also follows shallower trajectories within the atmosphere, which reduces its detection speed by the enemy's ground-based radars. Therefore, it is impossible to detect it. The adversary anticipates the missile's target, making it difficult to determine the likely point of impact. Because of this, the adversary's early warning radar will be activated, giving a warning very shortly before the strike. 
As you saw in the recent war between Iran and Israel, the high-speed Fateh-1 missile successfully hit its target without any delay. But is the Fateh-1 considered a hypersonic missile? Here, we will explain the mechanism of operation of the Iranian Fateh-1 missile. The missile is guided by two navigation systems, internal and satellite. Its warhead separates from the missile body at the peak of the missile's ballistic trajectory, and the warhead completes its trajectory toward the target. However, this warhead is not like other missiles. Conventional ballistic missiles, because they are equipped with a small engine integrated into their warhead. This engine's function begins when the missile enters the atmosphere, where it provides a rocket boost that significantly increases the missile's speed, bringing it to a speed of Mach 15, which is faster than the speed of a conventional missile. The enemy's defensive radar response. One of the successful scenarios implemented by Iran in the last war was the launch of the Fateh-1 missile, among other conventional ballistic missiles, through missile salvos. Anti-missile systems such as THAAD cannot distinguish the Fateh-1 missile from other conventional missiles, as it is currently at the same speed as conventional missiles. When missiles enter the atmosphere, THAAD radars begin monitoring them to determine their speed, trajectory, and target, and then determine the likely point of impact. But something happens that Israeli defenses don't expect. When the Fateh-1 missile enters the atmosphere, its small engine, built into its warhead, is activated, accelerating it to a high speed. At that point, radars lose their ability to detect the missile, and it becomes beyond their ability to intercept it. With the extremely high speed of the Fateh-1 missile, they will have no chance of intercepting it for him because it would have reached its target on Earth. Here, a question arises. Is the Fateh-1 missile considered a hypersonic missile by scientific standards? In terms of speed, the missile reaches a speed of Mach 12 in its final phase. However, the Fateh-1 missile is not considered a hypersonic missile because it lacks one of the most important characteristics of hypersonic missiles, its inability to change its trajectory during flight. The enemy's satellites and radars monitor it and determine its trajectory. Since it doesn't actually change its trajectory, the monitoring systems remain capable of predicting its crash point, even if only theoretically. A summary of the comparison between a ballistic missile and a hypersonic missile. From the moment the ballistic missile is launched, the conventional missile follows a high, stable, and predictable trajectory. Its maneuverability is virtually non-existent, while the hypersonic missile follows a low trajectory and constantly changes its trajectory, both horizontally and vertically, making it extremely difficult to track and intercept. While the Fateh-1 missile enters the area, the gray is between conventional ballistic missiles and hypersonic missiles, as it takes the trajectory of a conventional ballistic missile, but at the end of its journey, it takes off at a high speed that makes it difficult for air defense to hit it.